He said, we're gonna do something to your brain. Welcome to Dead Air number eight. This week we talk about Tiny House Nation, the tiny home movement. Uh, we talk about a new Bird Box movie, apparently. Bird Box Barcelona. Barcelona. Uh, and um, Vivarium, which we also watched. Uh, we'll talk about BBC Scandal, and perhaps Kenshi, and some other things. Mm-hmm. George, how are you? I am well. How are you? How are you this afternoon? I'm good. I'm good, I too. burnt my lip. Mm-hmm. As you wanna... people can perhaps see, I don't yeah. know. I feel like to explain what happened to your lip there. No. No. I'm fine. Are you sure? It's pretty funny. <laughs> I bit into a sausage, and it spat at me. A very hot sausage. A very hot sausage. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. I think I burned the corner of mine a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, they were hot. Good, though. Yep. Yeah, they're good sausages. Good sausages. Yeah. Um, so, okay, let's start with um, Tiny House Nation. Mm-hmm. It is a Netflix series. There are two seasons of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we watched, I think, every episode of it, I think we, we watched all of them, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And yeah, uh, it's about people moving into tiny homes. Yep. Um, people building tiny homes. Build people building tiny homes, yeah. Uh, for a variety of reasons. But what would you say the, the theme is? Because... We'd watched that other show, Hack My Home, mm-hmm. recently, and we were like, I thought this was going to be about tiny homes, which I actually do find kind of interesting. So we found this one and decided to watch it. Um, and yeah, it was a, a very different in tone and very different in... Yeah, it, it was much more... It was way less superficial than Hack My Home. It was much more about... Um, not so much the construction, but like the actual finishing of construction. Whereas Hack My Home was like about putting shelves up and things. Yeah. This was about like, okay, well, how are we going to embed the Murphy beds mm-hmm. in the yeah. wall? Yeah, and, and about the people like getting rid of enough stuff that they can fit in a tiny home. That's like a big component of it. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's, there's these two dudes, can't even remember their names now, who host it. They seem nice. The hosts were uh, um, still kind of TV, like, ah, tiny homes, mm-hmm. yeah. But they were way less insincere. Yeah. And the Hack My Homes yeah. people. Way less obnoxious, yeah. And way less obnoxious. I love the little guy with his acid suspenders on. Mm-hmm. That, that was nice. Nice mm-hmm. touch there. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah. Uh, I didn't I didn't dislike the, the series, mm-hmm. but, it, you know, it was about constructing or rather finishing tiny homes rather than, yeah. you know, the idea of tiny homes mm-hmm. or anything, yeah. which is more interesting, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And, yeah, it got me thinking about that quite a bit, just about the idea of tiny homes. Because all the people who are, in most of the cases, with the people who are moving in, um, it's always about, like, money and housing is too expensive. It's, like, the recurring theme. They, they kind of pitter around that a bit. Yes. Sometimes. But it's, but it's so clear. Like, the one where it's, like, a lady and her husband, she's like, we're going to sell our house and move into a tiny home so we can afford our daughter, daughter's college. Um, and mm-hmm. then like, then they just kind of move past that, you know. Yeah, and the hosts do sometimes say, because the hosts don't, I mean, like I say, they don't confront it, but they don't mm-hmm. deny it. The hosts do sometimes say things like, see, it's just downsizing, not do- not downgrading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah. And, um, of course the, the taller host occasionally gets asked, do you live in a tiny home? Mm-hmm. And he has to say, no, my wife won't let me. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not surprised looking at some of them. Some of them are way too small. Yeah, the, I mean, it's an interesting show. I find the whole like concept of tiny homes interesting. But yeah, I mean, like, the people who have children, especially. Like, the one where it's, like, the couple's bedroom is in, like, this loft area, and then their children's room is right next door with, with no, when, no wall in the way, and no doorway. It's just, like, another little elevated platform for their two little children. And it's like, I remember saying to you, are they planning on never never having sex again? Or, do you know what I mean? And are these two, like, these kids who can walk in this four-foot-high lofted room right now, they're going to be teenagers sharing that room with no wall separating it from, you know? Yeah. It's um, kinda... Are they ever going to have sex again? Like the, the dad is going to get a Kinder Egg and be like, do you want this? Do you want this? And then throw, throw it. Out the it. window. <laughs> Hurry. Yeah. yeah. We've got about 60 Lock seconds. Lock the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, that's always weird. I mean, I can definitely see why, you know, the, like the appeal 
of living in a tiny home if you're like a single person yeah. or or a couple and there are some who just are like yeah we just like this you know the yeah. couple who was living on living in a truck with their pig racing traveling around the country with pigs and they're yeah. like we travel like 50 weeks a year so we'd love to have something bigger than what we currently have yeah and they like mod out a, bu a bus like i get that they just seem happy to be like traveling and it's, it's not like i really care but i kind of i didn't really feel like the mobile home ones like not mobile homes but actual wheeled homes yeah i that's not a tiny house that's a that's a like uh custom rv yeah more or less mm -hmm. yeah and some of, some of the people on it like it makes sense there's the dude who's like i'm a traveling nurse i'm not saying it I doesn't travel. make sense I'm i just... move every three months it'd be nice yeah. if we could just yeah. take our house with us like i can get that but um but i mean yeah uh it's interesting just the kind of the undercurrent of like dystopia there was, yeah. obviously there was a very positive spin on you know it was like a i think it even had an escapist reality tv um what you, whatever subgenre heading mm -hmm. you know it's obviously meant to be like oh you watch this while you you know mm -hmm. just spending 10 hours at the factory and your eyes are rolling back in your head yeah mm -hmm. this is, that's that's what it's for like just sort of you know popcorn consumption um but um but yeah there was a very the, yeah, it was sad mm -hmm. behind it because, yeah, I mean, you know, all the people involved, it wasn't like, oh, God, you know, now I have to live in a caravan or something. Mm -hmm. But they were all, almost all, middle class. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'm a dentist and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 50 years, 100 years, like, the bottom rung of society has not been able to afford houses. Yeah. No one has ever given a fucking shit. Yeah. And now, but now that the dentists can't afford it. Yeah. I like, know oh, we'll get... Yeah. But even then, it's not like, yeah, there's a housing crisis. Live in a fucking tiny home. Live in a 300 yeah. square foot home. Buy a shed. And Buy a shed. A house. Yeah. And, and it being, like, a cool thing to do. Um, yeah, that's fascinating to me. This whole, you know... People talking about the tiny house movement, which I read a little bit about this before we got started. Really around like 2014 is when interest in tiny homes was like climbing quite a bit. Was that in conjunction with van life or was van life before that? I actually don't know. Mm. I didn't do my research about van life, sorry. Van um, life, like van life. some hipster in like 2005 looked at a dude yeah. living in a van with his 13 cats and was like, I could make that work. Yeah, that looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. I just have one cat. Yeah, I'll just, you know, live at campsites and... But go on, you were but, saying... Um, yeah, um... You looked at pricing and stuff, didn't you? I did, yeah. Um, yeah, so... Good stuff. Um, buying one and having it built for you, like, they typically range between $30,000 and $60,000 each, but they can be substantially higher. To have um, it... To have it built. Mm -hmm. It costs about twice as much to have it built versus if you build it yourself. You it, can build one yourself for between, like, ten and 30000 It says... Yeah. I mean, it's still less going with a kit, though, isn't it? What's that? Is that still with a kit? Um, no, just, just build it, like, I, plans, I could definitely know. build a 300 square foot house mm -hmm. for less than two grand. I mean, not plumb it in. Yeah, the plumbing and wiring Oh, and you're including the... To, oh, right, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did look at some people who, like, had done it, um, where a lot of the, like, who did it for, like, super cheap people who basically did, like, a shed, and it's, like... Uh, you know, like for like six thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars, and like a third of that will be the price for, um, like electric hook hooking it up and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. to plumbing and electricity. You can um, can go like you spent four grand on hookups. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. And yeah, a uh, tiny home typically depend. You know, there's different definitions, but they're typically under four hundred square feet. Some people say under six hundred could qualify as a tiny home. Right. And, um, yeah, definitely. So the interest began rising kind of around, like, 2014, 2016. And then with the pandemic, it kind of, like, spiked even more. And they're in, um, projecting that the market will grow, you know, over the next few years quite a bit, I guess. Um, and, yeah, because homes are too expensive. Um, like, uh, the, like, the average, uh, let's see. What, did I, what was I looking at? Since the 1960s, um, the price of homes has... Uh, 
been about like four, it's um, increased about four times faster than income. Yeah. Um, and like they say, you know, take your income per year, multiply it by about 2.6, something like that. And that's what you can afford for a home. So if the average income in the U.S. for, you know, or the median at least, is like 62000 for two people. For two people for so a house. You, so you can afford, you know, like 120 something thousand hundred fifty thousand dollars for a house which you can find like nowhere detroit that's um, great deals yeah i mean around here you probably could find a house for that yeah yeah you, know, you just have to be cool with rural it. kentucky yeah yeah live in a very poor area and you can get a place for cheap yeah, yeah. i mean i you know i really like where we live yeah. uh it would be really inconvenient if either of us had a job we had to go to yeah yeah the driving yeah i mean it's uh, to work could be substantial around here yeah we definitely do all right for working from home. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's fascinating to me because these are basically smaller than trailers, you know? Yeah, way um, smaller. And yeah, you can't get, typically can't get a mortgage on them. If you put it on a foundation, you might be able to get a mortgage. They depreciate. Um, they depreciate at about, like, like, like cars do, right. like RVs and trailers do. Yeah. Um, and typically their construction is only, um, Generally, only deter um, supposed to last between like thirty and fifty years if you take really good care of them. Yeah, I mean, okay, well, that's interesting you say that because I would have kind of assumed that. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to get into it, but like, uh, I didn't realize before I actually moved to America how much um, single-family housing is made of wood, mm -hmm. because in Britain, that's re or it was really rare. Mm -hmm. Like if you ever saw a house made of wood, it was, it's going to be like an architect's house or something, mm -hmm. or a tourist center. Yeah, versus like brick or something. Or it's all brick, and yeah. you know some stone. Mm -hmm. You know, especially like northern villages and stuff. Yeah. Um, like local stone and mm -hmm. you know local slate on the roofs and things like that. Yeah, it's all brick. Mm -hmm. I mean, like new builds will definitely be all be red brick and mm -hmm. then maybe painted, maybe rendered, but. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It never really crossed my mind that... I'm guessing it's more expensive doing it in brick and stuff here. Yeah, so, I you know. guess so. It's not like you guys have, like... You guys have way worse weather than... Way worse weather than Britain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Depending on where you live, I guess, yeah. Which is another thing. Maybe Britain with, doesn't um, have a lot of wood. Maybe. You know, compared to the US, which can just... We do have a lot of wood, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Um, so yeah, basically like living in a trailer, um, and it's interesting on the show, there's a recurring thing where like, the people moving in will say like, we haven't told our parents yet, um, that we're moving into a tiny home, that mm. we're going tiny, as they like to call it, and always being like a mom or somebody being upset. Like, there's, mm -hmm. there's a recurring theme of like, a mom or a dad, 50 or 60 years old, the, the one that really stands out was the... I can't remember, was she like, was she Vietnamese maybe or something? She, she was from Vietnam, yeah. Yeah. A Vietnamese immigrant, yeah. Um, who, she didn't say this exactly, but like, the way I interpreted what she said, and kind of like the sentiment of the other older people was like, mm -hmm. this is a step backwards. Yeah, I wanted a better life for you. I wanted a better life for you, and part of the American dream, Yeah. like Schwarzenegger talks about that, is big. Yeah. And yeah, the, our, I, the Vietnamese lady, she's saying like, you know, I moved... I think it was Vietnam. She's like, I'm, when I left Vietnam, people were living in no, Sweden, in hovels, uh, and I came here because you know Americans have houses, big houses, and yeah, feeling like it was a like like a sense of like I wanted better for you. And, and yeah, rightly or like wrongly, that means you know if I if my kid grows up in my our two story two story two bedroom mm -hmm. smallish house, then you know I want at least that for them. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not like those parents wanted them to be, like, living in mansions. Yeah. But, you yeah. know. And, um... But a house, and, like, you know, one that you can pass forward to the next generation, even. Something that's... Be quiet, Hamilton! It's just sticks in the yard, I'm sure. Um... Yeah. Could you live in a tiny home? Yeah. Yeah. Like, 400 square foot tiny home? Um, yeah, I could. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I would choose to. Let me just get on this. Yeah, sure. And I'll be back. Give him a treat. Yeah. <clears throat> what can I talk about while you're gone? Um, 
Yeah. It's interesting when George first, um, when we first got married, um, and he moved in with me, I was living in a studio apartment that was about probably like 350 square feet. Um, and that was interesting. Uh, but I mean, it was like, oh, it was like 550 a month or something for rent. Um, I mean, that's why I live there. And then we moved up to a one bedroom. But it's interesting thinking about like that amount of space and trying to imagine like having children and trying to, you know, have like, have, to try and have like a four person household in that small of a space seems like a bit crazy. I don't know. You probably get sick of each other. Um, but a lot of them are super expensive too. I guess I'll wait till George comes back so I can tell him about this, but there we go. Sorry about that. No problem at all. I was just talking about how we used to live in a studio for a bit, um, and that would be about the same space. It was like 350 square feet, so not that far off from... I thought it was more than that with the bathroom. No, it's like 350 total. Right. With the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and granted, a lot of these tiny homes, yes. they have like lofts. Do you remember the bed? Um, I do remember the air mattress, yeah. God, how long did that work for? Like two weeks. Yeah. I was just sleeping on a couch when he moved <laughs> in. <laughs> um, it was a roll-out couch. It was a roll-out roll couch, but it was incredibly uncomfortable. It was way more comfortable to use it not as a roll-out couch. Just sleep on the couch, yeah. Yeah, yeah I bet. Yeah. I'm waking up like with my head on the floor. Oh, they're always yeah. crap. Yeah. Always. And I mean, didn't it just pop like really quickly, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, that was that was something. And then we'd fill it up, and yeah, you'd fill it up before bed, and it'd be like, okay, well, I think we could get a couple hours out of it before it's shrunk back down, and you wake up, like, just on some plastic on the floor. Those, yeah. were, those were amusing times. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. then we got we got that mattress, mm -hmm. and just, just, it wasn't a Murphy bed, just, like, tipped it up. Yeah. Yeah, God. just, like, stand it up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <coughs> uh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, until a one bedroom opened up in the building and then we moved in there. But yeah, so it's interesting for me just to think about that amount of space I was telling them and imagine living in that amount of space and having like two kids as well. And granted, they all have, most of them have those like, like a loft bedroom area, which is a whole other thing. You see people like on the show going up to these lofts and apparently the typical tiny home loft ceiling height is three to four feet. So yeah. when you go to bed, yeah. you're going to be crawling. You could climb up a ladder and then crawl over to your bed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm waiting for estate agents, realtors, to start using, you know, that as like a luxury. Like, mm -hmm. you know, full, yeah, wait wait for that to put it in their pattern. Full height above bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You what, can stand up you in can, your bedroom. You can, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember the guy in the, I think it was a camper, who he could only sit up by putting his head through the skylight. Yeah. Like, he couldn't uh -huh. even sit up. Yeah. Like, so you're basically, like, on a submarine. Yeah. You know, yeah. cot bed. Which may not be, like, any big deal. Personally, I feel like uh, I would end up with a concussion within a few days, waking up to go to the bathroom, like, dunk. Yeah. So weren't you saying that you found a, somewhere in California that... Mm. Yeah, um, I was going to bring this up, yeah. The, I see... Good to the homeless. Mm. I, <laughs> I look at stuff about, like, tiny homes um, and get it in my newsfeed a lot, and... Yeah, um, there's mul there's one in California, but there's one actually I just looked at this morning in Florida that's like the same thing. They're like tiny house communities um, where you buy the tiny house. Um, like the one in Florida I was just reading about, uh, for they're all 400 square feet or less. Mm -hmm. And the purchase of the tiny house, um, they all cost between 90 and 150,000 each. And then you pay lot fees of like between 500 and 700 a month these places so like living on a trailer park like in a trailer park you'd have your trailer that like you own or yeah. maybe you rent it but then you have your lot fee that's just like the land that it's, it's on a middle class trailer and park yeah the last time that i lived in a trailer park it was like you know lot fees were like 300 a month or something like that 300 a month 400 a month for what but you own the trailer um for yeah you, or, or you can rent the trailer on top of that as well 300 yeah. a month for what for the lot for just the land the space the little rectangle that your trailer is sitting on your yard or well, for ten dollars a day i'm gonna cause some chaos <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so basically just trailer parks yeah except now i mean like 700 something dollars a month in lot fees the one in florida granted was like we have a community pool you know and the one in california was like 
there's a community garden, you know, like a farm that it's all on. So it's like, not even like this is a cheaper way to live, really. Yeah. It's like this is this is as cheap as it can as cheap as it can be while still squeezing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean... What's the difference between a, a tiny home and a cabin? Is there a legal difference? Um, see, a tiny homes typically is just the size. Um, right, could, it's just a general time, as a tiny it? home. Yeah. But the ones that you see, like, on the show, and ones that you frequently can, like, buy and, like, have it delivered and set up, you know, um, on your property or whatever, they all tend to be, like, long and skinny. Um, and they were saying on the show something about... Uh, like width restrictions for moving it down the highway. Well, that makes and sense. And especially yeah. the people who are traveling with them, they can't be any wider than a certain amount, mm -hmm. like by law. Yeah. Um, but technically, yeah, you can have like a cabin, and if it's just under, you know, 600 square feet, however you want to measure it, then technically it's a tiny home. And yeah, they can be either on wheels, um, or you can have them on a foundation. Definitely seemed like everybody on the show had them on wheels. And Not everyone. Not everyone, but. A lot um, of them. A lot of them, yeah. Um, which me, you, which again, you know, a lot of the people on the show for what I don't know why, but a lot of them seem to be like, oh yeah, I didn't really do that much research. Yeah, a lot. And I mean, I've the, never been in one. Yeah, a lot of the people show up and it's like their first time stepping into a tiny home, no. and usually one of them at least will be like, I have no idea like, it would be so small. Yeah, like a like deer in headlights. Like you could see like the panic setting in. Of like this is an incredibly tiny area to live in. Yeah. That's, I mean, that must be why they have, like, massive windows, so many of them, like, tons of windows, so you don't feel like you're living in a tiny little box. But, um, what I was going to say was, a lot of them, you know, seem to have, like, not really considered it before deciding to do it. Mm -hmm. I, it's, you know, it's going to be difficult if you're going to move every three months or whatever to... You're going to have to hook that up then. Yeah, like, you're going to find... So new, where are you... New electricity and You're obviously going to have to pay for that. that. Internet and, and like I wonder I wonder like ultimately like how much cheaper it really is. Yeah, I guess it depends on what you're doing Well, obviously for um, that guy the night nurse. Yeah, the traveling nurse, you know He, he probably what, makes, what's he gonna do stay yeah. in a hotel like yeah, sure that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah and I but, get it. He wants to be with his family and yeah still continue to do what he does like yeah, that, that's reasonable It's not really like yeah. I think any of those people on the show were like being dumb about it or something like if no. they want to live like that good for them It's more I don't know like it it doesn't bode well, does it, really? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, what's going to happen then? Are we going to live in pods? Like, sci-fi pods where, you know, your entire... You you know, your entire like house is, you know, eight feet by four feet by four feet. Mm -hmm. And all you've got is a bed and a TV and you share the shower with, like, a hundred other people. Mm -hmm. Or is the birth rate going to properly collapse? Mm-hmm. Which yeah. one is going to happen first? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Because I, mean, I know it has been collapsing, but you can, mm -hmm. you can say, well, pandemic and stuff, but... Rent's expensive. You know, having a kid oh, is I expensive, know. you know. I have um, heard. Yeah, that's what I've heard. It looks like a lot of work and a lot of money. Yeah. What, paying rent? Having children, I meant, but yeah. <laughs> Living in society. Living in society, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean... I don't know. I I can see the appeal of it. I'm the kind of person that I don't like having a load of stuff. You know, I can certainly see the appeal of living in like a small for footprint. You know, like less to clean, making things like efficient. You yeah. Know. Um, but I also couldn't see having a bedroom that's like three feet tall or like such a narrow, like living room area. Do you know what I mean? Like that would never work for us. I'm trying to put our desks somewhere. Okay. You know. Yeah. Well. But anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, so getting back to the point about, yeah, these, like, this theme of tiny home communities where, you know, you're, ba if you're paying, like, $700 a month, you know, like, a lot fee plus, say, you know, whatever loan payment it is, if you have one, um, which is a whole other thing. You can't get a loan for them. Yeah, you can't get mortgages on them. If they're on a foundation, not mobile, you might be able to get a mortgage on them. But then another problem is... Apparently, mortgage companies have, like, minimum mortgage amounts, um, typically about $50,000. So if you want $20,000 to build a tiny home, you're shot out of luck. You can get a personal loan, which could have, like, a way higher interest rate, or you can get, like, a recreational vehicle loan if it's on wheels. Um, yeah, like, getting them financed is apparently not super easy. So, 
Um, but yeah, anyway, if you're so if you're spending lot fees and you, you know, are paying like a loan for it and you end up you're living in like 400 square feet for you know like $1,200 a month, how does that make any sense? I mean, I guess that there are loads of cities where $1,200 a month for like a studio is apartment is perfectly normal. And I guess then the appeal is like you don't share walls, you know, it's your own place, whatever. But still, like, how did it go from. I mean, you can still do them super cheap when I was looking at this. Like, there are tons of people who, like, build their own for, like, $10,000, you know, like 400 square feet. Mm. Um, and then. Um, I could do it for 200 then, quid if you let me use banana leaves. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what I see a lot more of as well now is like luxury tiny homes. Well, yeah. Where it's like I mean, 150 grand. Yeah. Again, you know? this isn't really about homing people. Yeah. This is about homing people who should have homes because fuck all the, you know. Yeah. Working class people, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, got the one lady in the episode who's like, we had a big house and um, I didn't have home insurance and then it burned down. So that's why we're moving into a tiny house. And she had like 80 pairs of shoes to get rid of or some shit. Um, I like kind of a lot of sad stories about why people want to do it, you know. Um, that's given pretty short shrift. And she's like, oh, yes, and it's much cheaper, you know. No one's saying, no one's saying, like, yeah, now that I've made my millions, I can finally live in my dream tiny house. Yeah, yeah, like there was the one couple who had been renting like a big house by a lake or something. And wanted to yeah, have their right. own place, but couldn't afford. They could afford like to rent this big place, but couldn't afford a mortgage. Yeah. So they moved into a tiny home with their children. Um, yeah, it's a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. So, so seriously though, what's going to happen first? Are we all going to get crammed in? Like, make room, make room, <laughs> or um, you know, like swimming green, or yeah, is the birth rate going to collapse? Yeah, I don't. I know. mean, it has been collapse. I don't know if it's been collapsing, but. Yeah, it's gone down, yeah. Um, there are significant demographic problems. Yeah. What was that, like, um, super shared tweet that was like, why aren't millennials having babies? And it was like, that's because rent is 1500s and, jo and jobs paying $12 an hour. I mean, that, you know, you know that, yeah. that's a fact, that's a massive factor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, yeah. Um, I mean, we're not having kids. So, I'm sure there are... Probably are loads of people, kind of in our age group, who've decided just... Is that, is that economic for us? Um... I thought it was because I was drunk. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of out of that window anyway, so... Um, but... Uh, I don't know. I, it's, I don't think it's for me. I like dogs. I want another dog. He needs a little friend. What is next? <laughs> okay, no, nothing else in tiny homes? I don't think so. I mean, yeah. do you? Not really, just... You know, I do find it interesting, like... It was interesting as well, one of the dads of the place, which was a mobile tiny home, mm -hmm. was saying about, like, well, you've put plasterboard up, mm -hmm. and if you're going to move all the time, it's going to crack. Mm -hmm. So something like that, and that was a good point. Yeah. And, uh, like, yeah, obviously, like, the caravans I've been in don't have plasterboard. They have, mm -hmm. you know, like, fiberglass walls or, mm -hmm. or whatever. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I wonder about... I, I wouldn't even say, like, I wonder about the build quality. I just wonder about, like... Yeah, I, I, that's yeah. gonna... that's gonna rot. Yeah, if you're actually moving your house around with, like, you know, what? You hit a bump and screw up your wall or something. Um, wasn't there one where they said, like, we yeah. blew a tire? Yeah, and, a tire, they said a wheel yeah. came off. Yeah, wheel came off. Yeah, they had to stop and work that out and before they could get the house. Thus started the again. movie Rubber. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I can see the appeal of living small and not having a load of junk because some people just have so much shit. And like, I was reading an article um, from a lady who'd moved into a tiny house before we got started, and she was talking about how she likes it because. When she used to live in a four-bedroom house, she would buy all kinds of crap, and it would, you know, even if she never used it, she it would to just put it. stick in. Yeah, she their basement was like a landfill, um, and now that she has a tiny home, she uh, after getting divorced, she moved into a tiny home. Well, I hope um, she's still supporting the economy by buying some Jimmy Chews and then throwing them into the incinerator. Yeah, gotta support the economy. Yeah. Gotta support the economy. Very important. It's yeah. not really your money, is it? <laughs> yeah, mm. That's right. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. 
I guess that's all I have to say about tiny houses. What's next? Vivisection or? Um, I, in order, I wrote down Bird Box Barcelona. Well, next. do you not want to do Vivarium first? Since, sure. Since that's kind of about houses. Sure, let's do Vivarium. Uh, Vivarium. 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 Which we just watched a couple days ago. Yeah, um, go on then. What's Vivarium about? Uh, Vivarium is a uh, science fiction movie starring Jesse Eisenberg and... A lady. A lady. Uh -huh. uh, who I thought was good. Sorry, not so yeah. late. Yeah. yeah, she was good. Yeah. Can't okay, uh, and they get uh, trapped. Mm -hmm. They get sort of trapped by like the weirdest looking, I'm going to make you into a human centipede real estate agent you've ever met. Mm -hmm. Who yeah. like could not be more weird. Yeah, they're like going to look at a house. They get trapped in a... Vivarium, you know, like a terrarium or an aquarium for people, and all it is is an endless, magically endless suburb, magically endless a la the Blair Witch Project, mm -hmm. where they'll keep coming back to the same house, their mm -hmm. house, and they are, they can't, they can't escape it, and they're forced to raise a child which is clearly an alien and grows at like, uh, yeah. like 10 years every three months or something like that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, um... And they can't escape. Yeah. And they, they can't escape. So when we first... And they can't escape. They can't escape, yeah. So when we first started watching it, and we were like, okay, I mean, this, this is weird. This could be interesting. I'm not sure. Um, and I remember having a thought early on, like, okay, I see the very heavy-handed, obvious metaphor of, I guess, either living in suburbia sucks, or life sucks, one of those two. Um... And I was like, well, but there's this other sci-fi element, so I'm assuming that there, there's going to, you know, this is really just like an, an undercurrent to this theme of suburbia, and it's actually going to have like a story relating to, like, whatever this is, aliens mm -hmm. and being trapped. Um, and then, spoiler alert, no, you never really learn anything by the end. I mean, I, I kind of guessed <laughs> it would be like that by both the title and the fact I'd not heard of it before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I thought it would have a still kind of unsatisfactory end a la, a la. Mm -hmm. kind of like 10 was it 10, 10 Cloverfield? Cloverfield Lane yeah. I think yeah mm -hmm. yeah 10 Cloverfield Lane yeah um but it kind of didn't it just ended yeah. and it yeah it's interesting that we both thought of 10 Cloverfield Lane while we were watching it um and like it's mostly about claustrophobia and being trapped but there is a sci-fi yeah, like kind, of, kind of twist at the end, which didn't really work in that movie. No. Um, it got ridiculous at the end, but I could see what they were trying to do with it, and I thought they were trying to do that here. And to, but as we got closer to the end, I'm like... Mm. I think it's very, I think it's like genuinely, probably like the biggest challenge a filmmaker can face is communicating boredom in a b way that isn't boring. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, like, I don't know, like, I think of all the movies where, like, Count of Monte Cristo or something, where, like, someone's in jail for a bit, like, that's a montage. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that, that's hard to do for an entire film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is what a lot of this film was about, yeah. was, I mean, they're, they're trapped in this house, and they have shit food, and can't watch TV. Yeah. And don't have any booze. And they're, the child that they're raising... Who's is a, definitely an alien is obnoxious and very and obnoxious, very obnoxious and creepy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then that's kind of it. There's so many, like, kind of drawn out scenes of like the girl, like they did this. I feel like multiple times. Maybe it just felt like it went on forever, where it's just like her on the road looking around and the camera like following her, right? And this just goes on forever. And then like both her and Jesse Eisenberg like walking around this, you know, magical suburban neighborhood with nobody in it, and, um, yeah, like, kind of being bored and not knowing what's going on, and it just, um, really feels like it fucking drags when you get probably around, like, the middle especially. What do you think? I agree, if, and it was never going to be able to give us a satisfying <laughs> ending, it was, you know, but I did expect and I did hope for, like, some sort of garbage sci-fi yeah. Explanation. Even, yeah, exactly. Something simple. What were these aliens you know. doing and why? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, I don't even need like a, a big deep explanation, no. just something to tie it up at the end instead of 
um, she attacks the the son who's like an adult now. Played very well, very creepy. Yeah, no, the, the acting is good, you know. Yeah, um, and like attacks him, and then he's like picking up like the curb of the street and like goes underneath it. And like, whoa, now some crazy shit's happening. Okay, mm -hmm. like is this gonna be like? You know, like a the climactic reveal. like setup of what's really going on and stuff. No, she just kind of wanders through like other almost hallucinations, and, almost like hallucinatory for a minute, and then that's it. Um, and then she dies, and Jesse Eisenberg dies, and the ending is just the um, the son dude then going to become the realtor that brings people to this place. You know, metaphor life, like that's it. I thought there was going to be something. It's a terrible cycle where you can never escape the yeah, suburbs. Yeah, but I mean, like, we already got that theme, like, very clearly and heavily throughout the entire movie. I was, like, totally expecting something involving, like, the plot and what's actually going on. These aliens will subject you to disgusting mm -hmm. tortures, such as having to eat vacuum-packed yeah. shrimp. Yeah, right, yeah. We also talked about um, being kind of reminded of Nope. Uh, the Jordan Peele movie, yeah, the, but, the big yeah, alien yeah, thing. Yeah, kind of, but... Um... Um, because it cause it was kind of doing like other themes as well, but then mm -hmm. it, it concluded the story of the alien at the end, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not saying the movie was great, it was alright. It was, it was better than this. I liked this. it better than this, yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't really know if I have that much to say about it. it yeah. You know, I don't understand... I mean, what you know, what was the message, I suppose... Yeah, um, looking at IMDb, the people who, who life like is it, quite a... yeah, the people who like it seem to say like, no, it's like a you know, a work of like a of like nihilism and you know, like okay, well, I get that, I got it, I kind of wanted something else, you know, it's just the whole thing was hanging. But on But that just doesn't make sense either because they're not nihilists; they're trapped. Yeah, yeah, um, and th and then also just the frustration of like, um, we were talking about this about just it being. Like, if, it, if the metaphor really is just about, like, suburban life sucks, rather than life sucks, which I'm not sure, um, that's, like, really hard for me to connect to, personally. Like, okay, you live in a, a big house, um, and, you know, he's, Jesse Eisenberg is digging a hole every day, he's trying to, like, dig out, you know, he's working, get it, and not getting anywhere, um, trying, you know, wanting to have a better life and can't get anywhere, it's just, like, I get it, um, mm -hmm. but, like, I don't know, it's just, like, you know... It's just hard for me to be like, oh, it's living in a nice house. You're saying worse things have happened to see than living in suburbia. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Um, I know that you were kind of saying that too when we were watching it. Um, it's like Requiem for a Dream for uh, someone who's never experienced or understood any turmoil or <laughs> problems. Yeah. 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 That feels about right, you know. Um, yeah, very frustrating watch. Uh, you know, I mean, do you need to? Do I need to go on? There's some real dark shit out there. Yeah. And living in suburbia is not it. Yeah, you know. It's not even twice. Not that bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's by a tiny home. So yeah, I mean, when I was trying to give it the benefit of the doubt, watching it, like maybe I guess this is. You can say it's not really about suburban life. It's just about life. I guess, sucking and being pointless, and you were like, well, you know, what about different settings? And it's like, well, I, I'm kind of, I'm assuming that the reason they chose suburbia was to try and not get distracted by other themes, like choosing a more difficult life or something yeah. like that, do you know what I mean? I wanted it to be about, um, they get there, and had, then that, that kid was delivered mm -hmm. in a cardboard box, you know, raise the kid, mm -hmm. and everything, and they hate their lives, and then other people start to turn up. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to be about, initially, it's like, thank God, there are other people, we can talk to them. Mm -hmm. But then people still, still arrive until like, every house is full, mm -hmm. and they end up establishing an HOA. Yeah, right. And it becomes like hell, because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that could be fun. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I actually, I think it would have benefited from being a bit, well, not even a bit more humor, but there's no humor in it, was there? Yeah, it was very just, um, kind of more just straight up, like, depressing, you know, which is fine, can work fine, but with such a silly, like, premise, this idea of, like, I don't know, I mean, I'm assuming that they're, like, trapped by aliens or something, um, 
to have that kind of premise and then do it totally straight was also like, I don't know, it just got a bit like a little... I think awkward. the adult son was good, mm -hmm. but I think if you wanted to make it humorous, Martin Short. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like that kid has aged from like 10 years to now like an 80 year old man pretending to be 20. Could be, yeah, could use more He's Martin got like Short, a schoolboy yeah. outfit on. Yeah. He's like one of the crankies. All right. With like a, a big sucker and like a little hat. A big sucker. With a bow a on big it. Lolly. A big lolly. Like he's four years old. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. In, like, yeah. in like a school kid outfit. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, anything else to say about that? You were really annoyed when we finished watching it. I was annoyed. You were like, fuck that movie. <laughs> yeah, well, I just thought it was a huge waste of time. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, now now I just, oh, you know, it wasn't the worst, but I, I guess what offends me most about it, not that I'm very offended, mm -hmm. is just that it wasn't like it, oh, it tried to do something and failed. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I don't know, like, maybe with Nope, you can say, like, oh, I don't think that bit worked, but mm -hmm. I could see, what, you know, but maybe it did. Yeah, but I, think I can see what what was behind mm -hmm. the idea and yeah. stuff. And, and the idea works. With this, yeah. it, it's almost like they didn't finish. Yeah. The, the, you know, the actual, like, what's this actually about? Yeah, I was saying to you that it kind of felt to me like um, they, in a sense, like almost like they came up with, like, the setting first and then kind of worked the story yeah. into it. They're like, you know, we can do these... All these big shots of this, you know, these identical green houses, and that'll look interesting. And right, how do we get a story in there? Yeah, and and yeah, yeah, maybe not. Obviously, that's not a great way to write anything. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are examples where that's worked. Titanic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know, it wasn't like James Cameron came up with the story and then went, "Where can I set that?" Yeah. Right. Well, was there in it? Was there ever a real story about a ship hitting an iceberg? Mm -hmm. Well, you're in luck, James. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you know, but the, the setting wasn't interesting enough to mm -hmm. do that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I don't think Titanic is an amazing movie or anything. But, but as a story, it works. As a story, it works. It feels complete. Pure and, schlock, sure. But... And um, and that setting is like such a huge part of that movie. I think and why people like it, mm. like just how like the re like faithful recreations. Of interiors of the Titanic and you know how the it's like the effects being really good at the time and do you know what I mean? the extras were wearing flares that's attention to detail flares <laughs> did not yet exist yeah right yeah yeah if anything their their jeans were tapered yeah yeah so yeah um I yeah know, I know what's next all right what's next bird box yeah. Barcelona. Uh, no idea that they did another bird box. After touting bird box so loudly. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, we we came across this just scrolling through Netflix. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it more than the first one. Yeah. I didn't... I, I wouldn't say I didn't enjoy it, but it wasn't very good. No. I liked the setup of it. Um, we were, like, actually interested for the first, I don't know, like, first act or... Most of it yeah. takes place nine months after what well, we get to know in this one aliens or creatures yeah some ha creature. have either attacked or at least appeared on earth and something about them whether it be their probably i think probably they're using like hallucinogenic chemicals or something mm, something that yeah. makes people hallucinate and either want to kill themselves or want to encourage others to kill themselves mm -hmm. yeah and um, yep, and we're introduced in the first bird box to one of these dudes who's like in like the funniest scene in that movie, like open the windows, let the baby see outside. Yeah. Look. Tom, what's his name? Right. Yeah. yeah. He's very funny. He's um, great. He was great in that. Um, and and this one, the main character um, is one of these people, which was kind of an interesting setup. Yeah, it was uh, through his eyes. A vampire movie from the vampire perspective. Yeah. Otto's yeah. favorite. You called it before it even really happened. You were like, that would actually be kind of a cool idea. If they... But but it doesn't quite become that because. Yeah. Yeah. They should have done a lot more with that because it is like that, and then um, and then as it gets closer, like was it like just after the halfway mark where it's like they do like the reveal, you know, yeah, um, um, and that he so. Could... Go ahead. No, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah. So, it's set in a world where um, the only remedy to these creatures is to have a blindfold. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're naturally blind, you're actually fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but these creatures or the chemicals that create these create these hallucinations mm -hmm. 
for whatever reason, don't come inside. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, so I guess that's where the sort of sci-fi element really comes in, yeah. where it's not just like chemicals, but it's also light. Yeah, it's just outdoors. Like yeah. it, but it, you can be inside and look out of a window. And see it. And it's see it. And you can look through mm -hmm. a CCTV camera mm -hmm. and see it and, you know, suddenly want to bash your own head in. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so our man... Um, what were you calling him? Spanish Adam Driver? Sexy Spanish Adam Driver. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he... Yeah, he gets on, you know, he finds some people who take him in. He gets onto a bus where they're all sleeping and drives outside and kills loads of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, not including a man who's had his, who cut out, who had to cut out his own eyes. Mm -hmm. um, who we see survives this crash mm -hmm. and we never see him again. Yeah, he just kind of wanders off, yeah. And it's played like he's going to come back. Yeah. You know, because he, he, you know, the, the demons, the monsters can't hurt him. Yeah, because he can't see them. You have to see it. And yeah. the the people who are going mad and trying to hurt other people aren't interested in people who can't see. Mm -hmm. Hence yeah. why he cut his own eyes they just out. Leave alone. Yeah. Hence why blind people now apparently have complete reign of the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Should be more about that. Blind gangs. Yeah. Yeah, should be. Should have a reference to Blind Pew. <laughs> whacking people with his mm -hmm. cane. But, so so yeah, I mean, I, I don't like hate that idea or anything. Mm -hmm. But it certainly worked better when it was ambiguous as to what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, and in this movie we get, we, we actually kind of get an explanation. It is a creature. At the very end we find that the Spanish military who've occupied, um, I can't remember what it's called, but like the ancient castle mm -hmm. overlooking Barcelona they've caught a creature and they're mm -hmm. like, doing tests on it and stuff mm -hmm. you know leaving it open for another one another one yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah remember um I didn't hate it I didn't hate it but either some of it was a I bit... liked the idea but it did not fully like capitalize on the ideas that it kind of set up I think um do you remember at the end where it's um, the lady and the little girl are like running upstairs to try and get to the um, like uh, the cable like, car, the cable car mm -hmm. to get over to the castle, um, and then we get like the creature view, and it's just like going up the stairs, like <laughs> it can't just float up there; they have to go on stairs. Yeah, we get a couple of predator views. Predator views, yeah, yeah. Um, but not nearly as creepy as mm -hmm. the original predator views. Mm -hmm. They were really good. They were really good. Yeah, yeah. that was creepy. Yeah, it still kind of works. Yeah. First um, time they did that technique. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does work in that, yeah. Um, and in this, every time that we see it from, like, the creature view, I just have a little chuckle. Like, it feels less dangerous, you know. When it's just a velociraptor. When I, yeah, when it's, like, I imagine, like, yeah, just an invisible creature, like, going up some stairs, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Less dangerous feeling. Um, yeah, I mean, they've... I mean, who knows? They clearly want to. They clearly want to do a sequel. If they do, they. C I wouldn't be surprised if they. Uh, yeah, they will. Took back some of that, mm -hmm. you know, and just did something else. But they've basically established it's a. It's an alien mm -hmm. of yeah, some kind or something. Yeah, some kind of. It's either an alien from space thing. or it's an alien from, you know, we cracked open a chasm, sort of shit. Do you remember the bit where the one dude. He's like, I'm a pizza delivery driver, but I have a degree of, in physics. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's uh, the creatures are something to do with quantum something or other. I'm just like, what? Okay. Like, they almost, like... I guess he was just guessing, but it was just kind of weird to, like... That was an attempt for the filmmakers to subtly explain to us that what the creatures do is they make people see. Yeah, which we already knew from watching the first which movie. Which we already knew from the first movie. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know... <laughs> yeah, which... you, you see whatever's... It's already a rip off yeah. of uh, the Suicide Squid from Red Dwarf. Yeah. If you've ever seen that episode of. Mm. You know. No, it's an idea that's been done many times. Yeah. yeah. Stephen King's It. Yeah. You know, um, a creature that uses your own fears. Yeah, but it doesn't make project. you kill yourself. No. No. Um, it makes you afraid because then you taste better or something like that. It's a weird book. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so they, it was pretty much like, it became so predictable, like, after we got, like, the kind of reveal of, and like, yes, he is, in fact, one of, like, the bad guys, and yeah. he could, but he can kind of control, he sees his dead daughter. He thinks um, that 
I, he, yeah, sorry, go on. And, um, yeah, he's, like, religious, and he thinks, that, like, he's doing, like, God's work. He thinks it's the um, rapture, basically. He thinks it's, like, the rapture, and that by um, having these people look at the creature, uh, he sees, like, a white light, like, emitting from them, and he's, I guess he assumes it's, like, their spirits are going to heaven, this is a good thing. Um, and, yeah, he just travels around trying to get other people to look at it, and that, so they can either kill themselves or become like he is. Um... But, like, all that stuff is stuff that we knew, and then when we get to, like, the halfway mark, um, it became really obvious, at least I thought it was going to happen, okay, he's going to redeem, they're going to show, like, you can actually fight back against it, um, and, you know, n decide not to make people take their blindfolds off, um, so you can get redeemed, but then it just turns into, like, a really awkward, like, fist fight with the priest guy that we see at the very beginning, who, like, barely shows up throughout, and then they get to, like, duke it out in a final battle, and it's just like, I don't, I don't care, you know? Yeah, and they both end up skewered yeah. on the same rebar, mm -hmm. but, like, Spanish Jordan Peterson. Spanish Jordan Peterson, just that's right. Just looks like Jordan Peterson, that's yeah. the extent of that comment. Yeah. Is skewered, and then, like, pulls the hero, Spanish Adam Driver, in. Mm-hmm. And it's like you could have you could have completely avoided that dude. It's like you gave up. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, and the priest guy is just a dude. Like, just do you even need to worry if he's following you? You know, because he, like, they're trying to get to the like cable cars to go to the castle, and our main dude is like, I'm gonna stay behind and fight him so that the lady and the little girl can escape and go to the castle. But like, why? It's just one guy. And he had other dudes with him. Like, what happened to his to his posse? They just disappeared at one point. We saw one of them get exploded. Yeah, they but, did just disappear, yeah. But then I thought there were others and they just weren't there anymore. Oh, there's so, a car on fire. I'm going to leave. Yeah. Yeah, there's a car on fire. I'm going to leave. Yeah. It was a wasted idea. Mm -hmm. Because the, the idea was, okay, one of these insane people who can see the creatures, mm -hmm. presumably, or has at least looked at them and not killed themselves and mm -hmm. is now, you know, deranged gets over it mm -hmm. and realizes, oh, this is manipulation, you know, mm -hmm. it wants me to do this, but, mm -hmm. you know, whatever I thought is wrong. Mm -hmm. And then what he does with that is he rescues two people and dies. Mm -hmm. I, I'd have much preferred if he had come to that earlier and the film was actually about that. Mm -hmm. And like, he's, oh, actually, now that he's gotten over it, he's got this extraordinary power. Yeah, he can see. Where, yeah. where he can go out and these creatures aren't aren't killing him, mm -hmm. and he can... He can, like, fight back against it. He can tame one. Yeah. I want him riding one. Yeah, I thought it was a waste as well. And everyone has to look at him when he's riding it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it, that could have been an interesting idea if, like, yeah, if it even happened earlier, and then, yeah, he basically is, like, becomes immune to it, you know. Um, that would actually be interesting. Yeah, I also mentioned that. I wanted... To be honest, I wanted Vidoff. I wanted it to be about Vidoff waking up in the hospital, uh, kind of like 28 days later, mm -hmm. with like a big like lobotomy scar. Mm -hmm. He's been in an accident or something, and now he's missing the important part of his brain mm -hmm. that these creatures can affect. Mm -hmm. Like just being immune, you mean? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's kind of implied these creatures might be invisible. Mm -hmm. So I just yeah. like the idea of Vidoff walking around Barcelona, like looking around, and it's just... Stan and Towley fighting invisible monsters. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's in the yard. <laughs> in the yard, because they're so Ra high. Randy and Towley. Ra it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Randy and Towley, yeah. yeah. Just, like, doing this yeah. to nothing ah! in the yard. Yeah. But then we see it from we see it from their perspective, and they're fighting monsters. Yeah. I kind of wanted it to be a bit... I mean, I know it's going to be that, but... Yeah. I didn't hate, hate it. It did seem... It, I mean, definitely towards the end, it kind of lost its way. Yeah. Big time. What's definitely. next? Um, Bird Box Berlin. Bird Box Barnsley. Um, next, you've got uh, the BBC thing. No, I mean... Oh, what's what? Sorry. I mean, oh, the what's the next Bird Box movie? Well, I don't know. I mean, what do you do with the idea that you've captured one? Um, that seemed more like... It, it, it gets was, out? I guess, yeah. Um, but then... You know, we don't have our hero dude who's fought back against it. I guess, are we going to see other people be able to do that too? Um, fight against it, but that sounds boring because that's like what we did in this one. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? Um, I bet you the next one will be set 15 years 
a head, mm -hmm. and it will take almost it will take place almost totally in space. On like I, seriously, I bet you this. Yeah. On the space station, and it will be like most of Earth now has managed to contain this mm -hmm. somehow, and we've got a live specimen on this space station because it's the safest place to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And How they got them up there, who, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm right. not saying I want this, this is what I bet it is. Yeah, right. And then it, it's, ali in space. it's alien, mm -hmm. but people hallucinating. Mm -hmm. And they've all been, you know, they've all been drilled, mm -hmm. you know, to know it can do that and stuff. And um, then we get to see, oh no, it's my wife telling me mm -hmm. to get into this garbage compactor or whatever. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I bet the next one <coughs> is batshit. Yeah. 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 Okay. That could be a good or a bad. Because the natural progression is set it set it somewhere else, beginning with B. Mm -hmm. So it won't be that. Mm -hmm. It'll be yeah. Yeah, I mean definitely, Bird Box Barcelona. Yeah. Um, what else were you saying? Um, after we watched it, you were like, the next one will be Bird Box like Bogota. B B <laughs> Bird Box Bologna. Yeah. yeah. Bird Box Britain. It'd be fun. Bird Box Britain. Yeah. Yeah. The whole series. They're just places with a B name. <laughs> yeah. Is there a state with a B name, beginning with B? No, there isn't. It's goes from A to C. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut. Huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how I learned it. <laughs> we had nothing like that. Yeah. Middlesex, Sussex, Herefordshire, Hertfordshire. Yeah. I don't know, how many, I guess, how many counties do you have there? At least three. <laughs> At least three, yeah. Like, like a hundred or something. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Anyway, what's anyway. next? Anyway. Um, so, yeah, uh, other stuff you're going to talk about. BBC thing, the Italy thing, what do you prefer? Whatever. Country. Um, why don't you tell us about Kenshi? Okay, yeah. Um, I, I'd never heard of this until you were playing it, and it does look interesting. All right, uh, Kenshi is a video game that I've been playing uh, on and off for like f f four years. Mm -hmm. I think it was released in about 2018, but it might have been in kind of like an open beta or early access before then. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's a um, it's an RPG game that I particularly like because it is. Uh, very unique, both in its mechanics and its tone. I really go back to it for its world. And I was thinking about it because uh, one of the comments we had uh, a couple of episodes back about RimWorld mm -hmm. was someone saying that they they like RimWorld because it... I can't remember what it was. Like they, It's not like nihilist, but it keeps... Keep, reminds them, like you need reminding, of like how arbitrary the world is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it does, you know, RimWorld's really good at that, you know, you can, if you want, you can have a nice little colony where people are happy and have a mm. swimming pool. If you want, you can butcher people and make them into hats. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and um, Kenshi is kind of similar in that it, it is kind of that nasty, but I, I'd actually describe it as way more adult. Mm -hmm. Uh, not that like RimWorld is childish, mm -hmm. but um, the way it's presented is sort of, uh, I wouldn't even, yeah, I mean, I don't know, just, so what Kenshi is, is um, you control one, two, with mods, 256 characters, they have no backstory, they have no needs, no wants, mm -hmm. except for food, and you can arm them and essentially beat people up with... Mm -hmm. Weapons such as katanas and things like that. Would you call it open world? It's open world. Yeah. It's got a really massive handmade open world. Mm -hmm. And um, it is so big that a lot of it, you know, inevitably takes place from a zoomed out place. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it and you've... If you look at it and you've never... You don't know what it is. I mean, it looks like ass. And you know, the graphic quality and stuff. Yeah. yeah, it looks like an older game. It, it, oh yeah, it looks like something. Mm -hmm. It looks like something made in a parallel universe in 2013 mm -hmm. that that was going to be 
Like, it looks way older than it was, and like it was going to be a huge project that was like shelved halfway through. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's an independent thing, initially made by like one dude in his bedroom, and then like a few people. And I think it's like, I, I think it's a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. it, as extremely flawed and occasionally buggy as it is, mm -hmm. graphically it's very flawed, and mm -hmm. your little men get trapped sometimes, you have to reset them or reload, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, you can, you control, you know, one person, a group, there are no quests, uh, there's nothing to do, you could never commit to violence and make money by, like, mining if you want, mm -hmm. uh, but the world is exceptionally violent and broken. It's set in a world, is this making sense? Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. good. It's set in a world, um... So spoilers, I suppose, if anyone fancies playing it or anything. Mm. It's really law-rich, but there is no law given to you. You have to find it in books and from what people say. And all of that, even, is tinged with opinion from different factions. Mm -hmm. So you never really get the definitive lowdown on what's happened. Mm -hmm. Like, what's happened? Isn't it, like, thousands of years after something? So what, what, so what, we, what I know is um, you're on a landlocked moon. And this landlocked moon has an enormous ruined space elevator. So at some point, presumably, you were on the planet. Although mm. maybe not, I don't know. But presumably, at some point, this landlocked moon was... Um, of which you only play on one continent, and perhaps there are other continents that are not in Kenshi. Mm -hmm. um, Kenshi... So, sorry, got a bit lost there. <laughs> Can, so... So you're on this landlocked moon, and um, what happened was, a, about a thousand years ago, the Second Empire uh, decayed and fell over possibly decades, possibly hundreds of years. And, and it's really opaque as to what happened. We know that the Second Empire was probably ruled by robots, which are never called robots, they're called skeletons. Mm -hmm. We don't know who made them, we don't know if they're the master race and if they made humans or if it's vice versa. They possibly, in the Second Empire, they probably had a ruling position. Mm -hmm. um, but it also it kind of seems like the Second Empire was, in, was put in place as an emergency because the First Empire before it, mm -hmm. which we're talking 2,000 years ago, something happened, there was some sort of enormous calamity and it was destroyed overnight. Mm. And it there could... are all these like like ruins and like there are all these ruins, elements. but they're not even from the first empire. Yeah, like almost all the ruins you see mm. are from the second empire. Yeah, which is still really opaque as to what happened. Yeah, I mean, it, just from listening to you talk about it, um, something that you brought up a lot that I think is a really fun idea is just that, like, the lore of the world is like kind of like deep, but like you have to find it yourself, and like yeah, like contradictory things, like those big skeletons. Yeah. Um, that you just see, like, in the distance sometimes, like, the size of, like, a mountain. Like, that is so creepy. Um, yeah, and, and you, you find all these, like, incredible set pieces that, you know, you just, just find on your own. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I've played the game many times. The first time I played, I never even got to the south. I never even found the skin bandits. Mm -hmm. um, the skin bandits. Yeah, they're, they're skeletons who um, think they're humans, but kind of know they're not humans. Mm -hmm. um, and they skin humans and wear their skin yeah it's a pretty brutal game in some parts like yeah sometimes i'll like look at you and you're like you have like torture devices and stuff um the peeler like, yeah that one mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's the one i was thinking of yeah yeah it's yeah it's like flaying somebody and yeah um yeah or feeding them to like weird monsters stuff like that yeah 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 so so um what's happened is is that the you know, the world is ruined, and now the world you find yourself in is, is de at first appears to be divided between essentially like three warring-ish factions. One are like super, super religious fanatics, uh, one are um, like hyper-militarists to the point where they've had to ban dueling because mm -hmm. they were dueling faster than they could reproduce. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one is essentially an analogue for the United States. It's called the United Cities and it's corrupt to its core uh, to the point where it's, you know, clearly decaying and 
no one cares mm -hmm. or no one in power cares but but then you know you know so you you kind of start there in hell you know these different types of hells where no one has enough to eat and like the countryside is just roving with people who will beat you up to eat your food at best mm -hmm. you know potentially they'll enslave you mm -hmm. and you'll end up in a cage mm -hmm. and then you go out of there you finally get out of there and you realize like that's the best bit mm -hmm. it gets worse yeah, it right. gets so much worse mm -hmm. it's uh it's it's very good in how um yeah both broken the world is the world it makes is but also you know all the people in it almost all the people in it have been born into it and they just that it's just the world mm -hmm. it's not like post apocalyptic like you've still got people who can remember mm -hmm. what it was like really there are a couple of people you know a couple of skeletons and things like that but um mm -hmm. yeah yeah right yeah it's yeah. got a and and it, with the law as well being hidden it's very sparse mm -hmm. there's hardly any it never hits you with it and it never really tells like i say it never tells you what the truth is mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it certainly looks good. I'll have to play it at some point. It looks it looks so, like, desolate when I see, yeah. like, your little tribe or group or whatever running around. Um, it's just like, yeah, it's, it looks kind of like a hellscape a lot of times. Yeah, and obviously I haven't really even described the gameplay, mm -hmm. which, like I say, is RPG, and you arm your people, and they get better over time mm -hmm. with stuff, and usually in fights you don't die. You know, so a lot of your experience comes from getting beaten up. It's kind of, I wouldn't call it a novelty, but it's a different thing of, you don't get experience from, just from fighting people. If you, if you fight, if you're like level 70 mm -hmm. and you fight a group of turds, you're not going to get anything from that. You only learn from fighting people who are better than you or from losing. Mm -hmm. So it's got this real kind of, yeah, it's really brutal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And... Is it also, um, you can kind of like specialize in some of your characters, right? You specialize in weapons, so you, mm -hmm. yeah, eventually, you know, you, like if you've got a swordsman, over time they're going to get better with all swords, but if they only ever use a katana, they're going to get really good at using the katana. Right, yeah. Yeah, and different yeah. swords have different, you know, like a katana is probably better indoors, but like a big, like naginata or something, mm -hmm. like a spear sword mm -hmm. is better outdoors and stuff like that. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and um, it's not just human characters, right? You can get robot characters in your team, too. Get you? robot characters, you can get yeah. Shek, which are like uh, those guys with the horns mm -hmm. who've been genetically bred almost certainly during the Second Empire as enforcers. Mm -hmm. And there's an even younger race of, they call them Hive. They're like stick insect people. Mm -hmm. And they're all like asexual and they have a queen. Yeah, right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, And it fun. deals with, a lot, you know, lots of things about religion and mm -hmm. uh, race. There's yeah. loads of racism everywhere and mm -hmm. all yeah. sorts of things. Yeah, it like seems loads pretty, of sexism and... Pretty dark overall. Yeah. yeah. But in a fun way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it's, yeah, it does well at not being very black and white. Like some, you know, some factions are definitely more evil than others. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, I get you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anything else to say about that? I'm looking forward to Kenshi 2, mm -hmm. where I think there will be boats. Right, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. They're, they're doing a second one? Right? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Well, I guess at some point you'll get that and maybe I'll play the first one on your account or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Um... Yeah, I mean, if you have any questions, I can tell you, but... Um, what are what are some other of the torture devices? Because yeah, that's some that's of the... That's it. Oh, just the... Yeah. The flavor, okay. That's some of the funniest shit that I see, like... The combat, like, sometimes looks, like, brutal and hilarious. Where you'll see, like, somebody's, like, leg chopped off and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, pretty intense. Yeah. yeah. It can be really satisfying as well. Uh, when you first start it, um, all of your characters have, like, no skills in anything. Hmm. So at the start, like combat's like quite long and it looks dumb, mm -hmm. like people going mm -hmm. yeah. and stuff. But that, that's just because they have no skill. And eventually it gets to the point where you've got like a squad of people who are really good mm -hmm. and it looks really cool to watch them mm -hmm. fight. And I'll, yeah, I'll never forget the first time I realized they were getting better was when 
I had this dude like run across the desert mm -hmm. like on his own volition and just drop kick somebody into the head and just said KO. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it does look fun. Yeah, I'd never heard of it until you played it. So. Do you want to tell the good people about what you've been doing in The Sims? Oh, I have been playing a bit of The Sims. But it's a little bit frustrating because every time, whenever I go back to it now, I'm like, man, I can't wait for Life by You. I'm going to be disappointed. Where I can, well, I mean, probably at the start, but as they develop it more. Like, just having a color wheel. Yeah. God, I, that would be so great. To be honest, just the idea that they will, that Life by You will be being developed mm -hmm. is kind of what appeals. Mm -hmm. Like, rather than The Sims, where they've just given up. Yeah. Just, here's some Add more crap. junk. I know, like, yeah, I just saw... The, there's another freaking expansion coming out with horses. Horses. Somebody made a, a horses mod like years ago for it, you know? Yes, but it wasn't EA. And they didn't uh -huh. make any money for EA. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Wait, do you want to tell them what you've been doing? Oh, yeah, I started. Do you want to fess up to this? <laughs> yeah. She's making a sex dungeon. I made an Andrew Tate house. Um, don't, think, don't, I, don't look at me. Tell a, them. A pretty good job of how he looks, you know, basically Gollum. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, with no chin. Yeah, um, like there's a... I think, I think his baldness suits him. Yeah. I Don't get me wrong, I think the guy's an absolute titwank. Yeah. But I, I don't think he's ugly. He, he's not ugly, but he's gross. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, don't yeah. dig on, don't Anyways. dig on him for the way he looks. Dig on him yeah. for being an absolute piece of garbage. Yeah, no, that's just more of just a side note. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Um... Yeah, man. Oh, so your mum uh, smells like elderberries. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, you, yeah. so I, I chose a like a, a nice Eastern European neighborhood and put his monstrosity of a house in there and made it kind of like the way it looks like it's done at his house. Where if you ever seen like because we did a video by Andrew Tate, um, like photos of his house like from above, there are these like little like cubicle houses like in a big row. Um, where I'm assuming all the sex work takes place. And, Crazy. Yeah, so my Andrew Tate in my games, you know, I haven't gotten there yet. I'm still working on the ridiculous house. It looks like it was designed by a 12-year-old. That's how I imagine it. Um, yeah, and he'll, he'll have um, people locked into rooms doing social media for money. That's a... Uh, yeah. Because I've done that in another game yeah, where I had, yeah. like, I had like, a, um, a, like a cult that I made. Yeah. And um, this dude it was living in like a, like a bunker in... Um, like, like Strangerville or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. I like um, that one too, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he like, <laughs> he had like little cells in the bottom floor and one dude, <laughs> he like, I made him move in and then locked him in the cell and then he spent li like literally just like a, there's a cot and like a toilet and a easel and he became a master painter, um, which then the cult leader dude sells. On, at, at, on the side of the road in this like dilapidated town for like <laughs> eight thousand simoleons a time or something uh, more yeah yeah when you get master quality paintings you can sell them for like a hundred thousand by the side of the road by the side of the road yeah yeah um you get this master painter yeah um i was gonna do that with like do several of them like have like a a knitter in one like selling like <laughs> expensive knitting <laughs> <coughs> on like the sim etsy thing in game um yeah. So you're I mean, going to do that with your your girls, your Andrew Tate's girls. Andrew Tate girls, yeah. You're going to, yeah. Didn't you say you were going to, like, uh, make the rooms decked out with flirty material? Yes, yeah, so, so, so that you can they're make starving. flirty video types, yeah. They're, they're, what was it? They're, they're starving, they haven't slept, uh, but none both, of their needs are met, but they're really but horny. But very horny, yeah. so they'll keep doing Because you have to, if you want to have, like, one of the emotional types of... Like the video station, it's basically like like they're like a YouTuber, um, yeah. And um, there's different like if your sim is angry, you can do an angry rant video. I wonder where they got that from. Um, angry rants. Surely that's a, a Joe joke. Anyway, um, so you have to be like in, if you're in a certain like extreme emotional state, you can make specific types of videos. And yeah, flirty is one of them. Flirty video. And yeah, they'll be making flirty videos. Um, and yeah, you know, all the money will go to him, and I don't know, there's gonna be some way I can make armed guards. I haven't decided yet how to make that work, but... Yeah. Can't, couldn't you just get a prop? Like, like a statue almost? Um, perhaps, 
perhaps. Or do you any you want them to be on patrol? No, not necessarily. Yeah, I'm not really sure how that would work. Maybe out. they could I hadn't get them on that lets them shoot in the mailman. Yeah, I mean, I don't have that like murder mod or whatever. I've heard that it's really good and intense. That's just why I've not had it. I've seen pictures. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Well. Like Sims getting hit by cars and there's just like a twisted, bloody pile of limbs. Like, goddamn. I don't really know if I want that in my Sims game. Maybe. <laughs> just in one. Yeah, if I can keep if I can yeah. strain it to one neighborhood, perhaps, or something, that would be good. But, um, yeah. I mean, I do lots of shit like this in Sims. Just make yeah. banana stuff. That's the fun of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's next? Um, okay, you wanted to talk about the BBC thing. BBC... Hugh Edwards, mm -hmm. John Simpson, mm -hmm. Roger Square. Okay. Yeah, I know nothing about this, really, so... Thanks. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you may have heard, it happened about a week ago now, um, that Hugh, do you know who Hugh Edwards is? Mm -mm. He's a, I suppose, a very famous BBC news anchor, mm -hmm. news reader, um, who has been around for, like, more than 20 years, I think, and... He's even so sort of famous and trusted that he was the guy who delivered the news to the nation about Queen Elizabeth II dying. Uh, it's come out that he has been suspended uh, from the BBC pending an investigation, I suppose, um, because he has allegedly spent like £40,000 over the last three years uh, buying photos from a girl starting at her being 17. Mm. She's now like 20. Mm. The police have looked into it and said that actually nothing illegal happened. Mm. But uh, it looks like he has been doing that. Mm. Um, the mother of the girl says that uh, she's been doing it to fund her crack cocaine addiction. Right. But the girl denies that. I mean, girl, she's like 20. Mm. But... I don't think she's been named. Um, and I just wanted to sort of see what you thought about that. Like, mm. he's not done anything illegal. His wife came out and said, oh, actually, he's got mental health issues and he's mm. currently inpatient. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Um, so I don't know if that means she knew about this. Yeah. It's not really clear what the photos are. I mean, um, they must have been explicit. But... What's the inpatient treatment for? You know. She's, she said he's been suffering for, from severe depression for years, okay. but I, I don't know if there's something else or whatever, but, mm -hmm. but I was wondering if, um, you know, there've been people like calling for his resignation and stuff, mm -hmm. bearing in mind he did not do anything illegal, the police say. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you think he should resign? Um. Or be kicked? Uh, I mean... I try to imagine if I were in that position, being him, I'd probably resign just for the embarrassment factor, you know, and yeah. maybe just kind of move on, because, um, yeah, I mean, so the girl was 17 to start. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, right. And she doesn't say he did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, so this has been in the news, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, what is the tone of the conversation? Are people saying, like... Like, like, he should quit, and he should be fired, or... Well, I think that, that kind of what changes it is, like, if it was, like, someone on CNN, mm -hmm. you know, it would be, you know, up to CNN. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, is Wolf Blitzer going to use this as a retirement opportunity? Is CNN going to kick him? Mm -hmm. But, like, this is the BBC, which is obviously, you know... I think 75% of it is funded directly by the licence fee, and the rest is pretty much funded by the government mm -hmm. one way or another through subsidiaries and uh, subsi subsidies and things like that. Yeah, right. So I guess you could bring that into the the, the mix mm -hmm. of like it's not as simple mm -hmm. as that. Get, you know, yeah. he's essentially it's a almost like a he's almost like a public, public servant, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I get you. Hmm. Yeah. But again, he's, you know, legally he's done nothing wrong, so it's a moral question. Mhm. Mm yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, that does sound pretty immoral, I guess. Uh, why, why? What's immoral about it? Well, I mean, it, 
a lot of this is my opinion. Like, I know I understand, like, the age of consent in the UK is, like, 16, mm -hmm. right? And here it can be, it depends on what state you're in. It can be 16, yeah. It can be 16, yeah. Um, it could be 14 with parental permission. It could be, you know, you get married. Do Any, so. Anyway. I give permission for my daughter to have sex. Yeah. Um, However. I mean, just to me, a 17-year-old is a child. So that's yeah pretty gross. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, especially, like, having a couple of nieces who are 17. Like, those are children. You know. Yeah. Um, I would find it disturbing if... How old is this guy? 50-something. Yeah, right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, do you, I don't know, do people get fired for, like, moral reasons? I guess so. Um, yeah, but it, again, you know, it, it, it's not like he works, you know, at the power plant, is it? I mean, he's on TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. I don't know. What's your opinion? Um... What is my opinion? I don't know. I, I, I think I would have to look further into it. Um, I think, you know, it, again, I guess I don't really care. Mm -hmm. I guess if I were, I, I was, you know, the director general of the BBC, mm -hmm. I'd be like, hi, Hugh. Mm -hmm. If you don't quit now, I'm going to fucking rake you through the coals. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna burn you fucking down. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. I'd want him to. I'd want to get rid of him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This. This is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. definitely at the very least. I'm not saying that should happen or shouldn't happen, but yeah. It, yeah. But that's what. Yeah, you'd probably yeah. do. Yeah. I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd. I'd threaten him. I'd say, if you're not gonna resign, I'm gonna blow this up. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring you into it. I'm gonna bring your wife into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll. 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 You know. Because I mean, he's fucked. He's never gonna work again. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. but I, I, you know, I, I guess it depends, you know, so like, you in, know in this we, country, we, can, we can drop everything mm -hmm. we want on the daily mail. We can make you a fucking national joke for six months running. Mm -hmm. You want that? Yeah. Right. Are you mm -hmm. going to fuck off? Yeah. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Just... I've been watching too much Logan Roy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to take that opportunity to ask you about the idea of a TV license. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't totally understand it. Like, households pay a TV license mm -hmm. in the UK? Mm -hmm. Is it in your taxes, or you have to, like, pay it? You, pay have, it? you have to pay it. You have to, to apply get for it signal. and get a certificate. Nope. Uh, anyone can get a TV signal. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, it kind of, it you know, it kind of was out of date, like, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. when people started to get to the internet and watch the internet on TV. Mm -hmm. You only have to pay for the license... If you watch live TV, or if you watch BBC iPlayer, right, okay. um, so and that's for funding the BBC and yeah, okay, right, yeah, mm -hmm. and seventy five percent of their, I think five billion, seventy five percent of their mm -hmm. whole funding comes from that. Right, and what is the license fee? One hundred and fifty nine pounds, about two hundred dollars. Like yearly or one time? Yearly. To watch live TV. Yeah. Okay. But if you don't watch live TV, if you just use your TV to watch, like, Netflix, mm -hmm. you'd have to pay it. Yeah, okay, I get you. Huh. So, right. yeah, who's going to admit to that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um... I paid it one time. Yeah, right. Yeah. When I was a student, I paid it the first year, and then it was like, well, yeah. I just won't watch BBC live TV. Yeah, I get you. Um... So what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, that's different than what we have here, you know. Um, obviously, I mean, you know. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it seems, like, foreign to me, I guess, just that idea. I mean, you know, here, like, yeah, you can just get TV signal and, you know. It's paid for with ads. Yeah. And you get PBS, which is um, paid for by donations. Donations. Just look at that for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess the thing about the the BBC. Well, I mean, do you want to talk about this? If you want to. <laughs> I guess. Um, I guess the thing is, is like, uh, you know, they do have good journalism, mm. and I do think they do a public good. And if they didn't exist, I think you could risk way more of the 
Oh, uh, way more uh, interference and actual control from the Murdoch Empire mm -hmm. in Britain, mm -hmm. which al already has a dismal stranglehold mm -hmm. on a good portion of that country's mainstream media. Um, however, you know, I I studied film and TV at school, and everyone involved in the BBC said. It's run by people who went to Cambridge in the 80s and 90s and are coked out of their minds. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about that, but definitely the Cambridge thing mm -hmm. is, is true. They wouldn't get people from Oxford even. It would have to be Cambridge. It was a club. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's meant, you know, it's meant to be for the public good and public information, and definitely an element of it is. But then why am I paying a licence fee? Paying. Mm -hmm. Why am I paying a license fee uh, for you guys to make Strictly Come Dancing mm -hmm. and yeah. to pay the you know and to make the Great British Bake Off? Mm -hmm. uh, fuck off! Um, the way they justify those things is we have to compete. Mm -hmm. We have to make you know. Oh no, no Strictly Come Dancing. Yeah, it, it costs millions and millions to produce. So mm -hmm. you know of of license payers' money, mm -hmm. but it gets really good ratings. Well, so and what? We, yeah. Well, yeah. so what? That's what I think. Yeah. Well, so what? If it was up to me, I wouldn't get rid of the BBC. Although, depending on where you look, two thirds of voters want rid of it. One of the rid of the license fee, not necessarily the BBC, but the license fee. Mm -hmm. I'd get rid of the license fee, mm -hmm. um, and I'd, I'd make B. I think they've got ten TV channels still. I, I'd make BBC One and BBC Two really good mm -hmm. and really informative, mm -hmm. and documentaries and news. And you know, yeah, leave the fuck tenor. it if no yeah. one watches. Yeah, I mean, is it it's non profit BBC or is yeah, it, is yeah. it yeah yeah yeah? I well, mean, they're always on a deficit. Yeah, well, I mean, who gives shit if they if they get good ratings or not? Yeah, that's, if that's not what it's for, because you can you know. still have the power of you know Im impartial journalism. Yeah, you know you sure you know I mean nah. yeah I mean I definitely think that if we you know had something like that here where like you have to pay like a fee to this, you know, to a nonprofit that's supposed to be like a, you know, news organization primarily, and yeah, and they were actually making Dancing with the Stars. Like I'd be pretty fucking annoyed that my tax dollars were going to that. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Not tax dollars, but you know, public. Yeah. Money. So. Yeah, because you you know in Britain it's, yeah you can have a, television you know you can have a monitor mm -hmm. and not watch. BBC, mm -hmm. but you can't watch any live TV. You can't watch, you know, a commercial live TV mm -hmm. program. Right. Yeah. You know, and they used to. I don't know how much now. They used to send people around to people's houses. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. Yeah. They sent they sent a guy around to my dad's house, um, because he didn't have a license because he didn't have a TV, mm -hmm. and this guy was like knocked on his door and said, and was like looking through the window. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I see you've got a TV. And my dad's like, that's not a TV, that's my computer. Mm -hmm. And this guy tried to come in. All right. And my dad had to, like, stop him. And this guy was like, I have the right to come in here. This was, like, ten years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And my dad was like, come back with a cop. Come yeah. back with a policeman. Yeah. And the guy was really pissed off. Never saw him again. Over watching TV? Yeah. Do you have a license for that? All right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't do that here, could you? I don't think so, no. I don't, I don't think that would fly here at all. Yeah, um, but what I wanted to say, yeah, this reminds me of, of one thing real quick mm -hmm. about the BBC. Um, I remember watching the BBC news when Baghdad fell, and there was um, a journalist at the... Do you remember the statue of Saddam mm -hmm. Hussein being toppled? Mm -hmm. There was a BBC journalist. Um, called John Simpson in front of it mm. and he I remember him talking about like this is a momentous moment the crowds are swelling in here and it they have spontaneously decided to take the statue down mm. and then like uh, about four or five years later I remember watching something else and some and the someone was saying on this documentary or whatever it was that was completely staged. Mm -hmm. it, it was done at American military behest, mm -hmm. and they got loads of 
sim- you know, not sympathisers, but they got loads of like pro Western Iraqis. They bust them in, mm-hmm. and they staged it all. Mm-hmm. It wasn't right. spontaneous at all. And I, I remember like trying to look that up. Mm-hmm. Like, did John Simpson lie about this? I couldn't remember his name, and I was like, it wasn't John Sessions. It was you know. Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't find anything, any acknowledgement that it was lied about. Mm-hmm. Like, so what happened? Mm-hmm. John Simpson went to, he was in Tiananmen Square mm-hmm. when the Chinese started firing. He was in Romania when Ceausescu fell. You know, he's a proper seasoned uh, war correspondent. Mm-hmm. But he lied about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. He was part of the media circus. Mm-hmm. Um, during the Iraq War, uh, the BBC was actually turned off on certain battleships, mm-hmm. British battleships, because the military said that the BBC was too pro-Iraqi. Mm. A later analysis found that of all British media, the BBC was actually the most pro-war. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Probably because they were scared of being criticised for criticising. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's a recurring problem. Right. Fidros Square is where that came down, and it was a... You know, it was a propaganda moment. Mm. And I guess I've just never been able to really trust the BBC since finding that out. Mm. Yeah, right. I get you. Like, at best, they were tricked into that. Mm. I don't think they were tricked. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Interesting. So, you know, for me, the purpose of having something like the BBC is for actual fair, impartial news and, uh, yeah, eat shit because you've not been providing it. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I no. get you. But I think they make some great programmes, and, you know, they genuinely, a lot of their new stuff is good. Yeah. But th- it's always been tinged for me with that. I get you. I mean, I guess that's just part of the... And if you ever read it, it's, like, written from... Like, you can you can see BBC News, mm-hmm. like, especially, what's his name, Rory Kemple jones or something, the tech guy. It's all, like, toffs. It's all, like, upper-middle-class people who have no fucking idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I'm not a tough. I, I, I went to St. Andrews. Yeah. <laughs> right. Italy? Um, LGBTQ? Yeah, tell me about this too. I think I just caught a glimmer of it in um, the news feed. Italy has begun removing uh, the non-biological same-sex parent mm-hmm. on same-sex par- I think it's actually just lesbians yeah, right now. Yeah, that's what I thought I saw as well. Um, say on... Same sex parent birth certificates. Mm-hmm. So they're keeping the biological mother, mm-hmm. but not the non biological mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, surrogacy is illegal in Italy. Right. So that, that. that's why there's not that problem. Right. Okay. Who goes on the birth certificate if it's a cur- surrogate? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Why is it illegal? I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, know. Something, something Catholicism. Right, okay. That would make sense, I guess. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Like, what a terrible step backwards. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, um, the lead singer of Placebo, mm-hmm. I think this week, uh, did a gig in Italy to like 5,000 people mm-hmm. and ended it by calling the Prime Minister um, of Italy uh, basically a fucking fascist. Mm-hmm. Right. Um and now, which which isn't that interesting by itself, but now Italy have said that they're going to open up an investigation because he may have broken laws against disparaging the state. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to me, that's even more interesting than the whole, uh, we're doing this bananas, like absolutely fucking bureaucratically worthless thing of removing people from birth certificates. Like, what does that accomplish? Yeah, like Apart why? from being a dickhead. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I love the idea that they'll be going after a non-Italian uh, celebrity for saying, fuck you, Prime Minister, you're a fascist. Yeah, right. Like, how will I prove that I'm not a fascist? I'll crush him! <laughs> yeah, right. <coughs> hmm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dickhead. Um, yeah, it's actually illegal, apparently, to disparage the institutes of government, police, or army. Your army's a fucking joke, all right? I mean... Yeah. Yeah. You're such an American, now. Oh, yeah, because British people think Italian armies... Are... No, just not because of that, just because whenever you bring up... George will occasionally just talk about, like, you see what the American military will do to you! They will crush you! 
American military. I wasn't saying that. You've said that so many times. I wasn't saying that here. <laughs> no, no, not here. It just made me think of that and chuckle for completely unrelated reasons. So oh, yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah. When have I said that about who? I Bloody remember. French. America will crush you. <laughs> I can't remember what you were talking about last time it came up, but yeah, just occasionally. Yeah. Nothing. That's it. Sorry. Damn. Yeah. Jeez. All right. You're a fucking ferret. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, what is the stated reasoning for this? Um, for taking just lesbians off birth certificates? Their stated reason is Italy is a place where men and women have children. Okay. Right. And what are the consequences of this? Um, I would assume there'd be legal consequences. Like one of those parents, I would assume the one who's not on the birth certificate might have some difficulty with, um, yeah, like public services maybe, or, you well, know. Uh, you know, even things like, well, if the kid goes to a hospital, is the woman not on the birth certificate, not going to be able to get in? Yeah. You or know? not be able to make health care decisions. Yeah. Um, for their child. So there yeah. are real consequences, yeah. but it, it just, it strikes me, I mean, yes, there are real consequences, but it's incredibly petty. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get you. Yeah. Get a grip. Yeah, I mean, uh, it just reminds me of, you know, the long battle to get, um, for gay marriage, like, because this is part of it, is people think, like, well, you know, you know, marriage to me is a religious thing, so they don't get, you know, it shouldn't be, they shouldn't be able to get married, like, they could, you know, do some other thing, but marriage has like financial and legal benefits um, that like actually do make a difference. You know, yeah. like your partner should be able to, you know, have a say in yeah, you know, like your wishes in terms of your medical care, and you know, should be able to um, like, you know, not be on the same mortgage together, and you know what I mean. I mean, like, if it's a religious thing, then you're saying. Um, Christian marriage yeah. is for men and women, and that's fine. If that's a religious mm -hmm. thing, yeah. that's fine. It's a religious okay, thing, so. boom, Church of George, only gays can get married. Yeah, also... Um, Straight people, in the Church of George, um, marriage is not between a man and a woman. That's yeah. the one thing we don't allow. None yeah, of that, yeah. none of that. Yeah, They can I mean, bang, but... I mean, definitely there's issues where, you know, you know, like before gay marriage was legal, where, you know, like it, like say your your spouse, your partner dies... And mm -hmm. you know they want to leave their house and their like money and stuff to you. And military benefits. You can't military benefits. Yes. Uh, law enforcement um, pensions. Uh, health insurance in general. Yeah. You know, being on you know, the shared. So so get rid of all those benefits and then yeah, who cares if people get married or not? Get rid of all his benefits. Yeah. Yeah. No more tax write-offs for being married. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Anyway, yeah. Um, that seems um pointless and. Gross. Yeah, kind of mean. Yeah. Um, why just women? Like, is it is it just lesbians or is it is this supposed to be for gay dudes as well? It's unclear because it's actually local prosecutors doing this. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it might just be that I've not come across or it's not yet come out of Italy. Right. The full extent of it. Sure, gotcha. Yeah, I know that it was kind of recent because I just saw it. Wasn't it just I mean, like last Wouldn't that be a weird homophobia if they're like, yeah, gay dudes are fine. Yeah, gay dudes can raise children, not gay women. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I saw stuff about that on social media as well. People getting pissed off about it. Yeah. But, and that was about it. I didn't really know much about it, though. So, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? No. Nope. Yeah. Anything else in general you want to talk about? No. Yeah. But well, I think so. Do you? I think I got nothing, yeah. I think that's that's about the extent of my things to talk about. Although usually every time we're done, we'll go out there and I'll be like, shit, I meant to mention this. So I'm sure that will happen. Yeah, the president was assassinated, I didn't say anything about that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, not really. I mean, there were other stories and things this week, but nothing that I really have anything to say about, you know. So why bother? No. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, office space. That's depreciating. Bloody office workers staying at home. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, like is, that. In, yeah, that is interesting stuff. Yeah, like um, complaining about you know, the poor landlords that own all those buildings in New York, office buildings that are still vacant. You, I mean, convert them into apartments. Are you mad? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, our place is already doing that, yeah. With the pencil on, wouldn't you be tempted, if you ever got hold of that, just to, like, gut it and convert it into a massive vertical skydiving centre? <laughs> right. Uh-huh, like, yeah. where you can, like, slam into the walls yeah. and stuff. Yeah, like that, that tower in New York, that hideous thing. The skinny tower one. Tower one? No. That's not cool, Christina. <laughs> I forget what it's called. The one that everybody, like, hated. Uh, wasn't that the pencil? The... I th- that that might be I can't remember the name of it but yeah it looks like a pencil and talking about people having like twenty million dollar apartments like with lean. like they're like yeah they're like you can't sleep at night because you're moving all the time and uh, yeah people moving in with like the plumbing wasn't finished and on their like luxury apartments there's like water dripping from the unit above and I don't know I can't really remember but <laughs> yeah yeah all right then yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess that's it. Yeah. Oh, so what was your comment on on those people? Eat shit. I mean, Eat shit. Get a grip. Get a grip. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much for watching. <laughs> Ta-ta. See ya.